Episode three of Disclaimer begins with Robert driving away, hurt by Catherine's infidelity, which has destroyed their entire life. He's drinking too and refuses to indulge her calls. Catherine struggles to get through to her husband and can't explain to him that she hid all of this specifically to protect Nicholas. Robert sleeps in his car and wakes up to a monstrous number of messages from Catherine. He can't drive to work after drinking all night, so he takes the bus to work instead. There, he begins to see things very differently, including those who are on the bus with him and whose lives may be different to his own. He doesn't go to the office, though, and instead hunkers down in a quaint cafe and decides to read through the Perfect Stranger book. He knows that this is based on real life now, and through flashbacks, we see how that has all come about. Here we see Jonathan still alive and helping out Catherine and a young Nicholas. He's invited inside their hotel for a drink with her while Nicholas is asleep upstairs in bed. She promises to meet Jonathan by the bar for a drink as a way of thanking him. Catherine seduces Jonathan, touching various parts of her body while not caring that he has a girlfriend. She mentally stimulates him and then leaves Jonathan the key to her hotel room, encouraging him to come join her. He does just that, and she continues to have her way with Jonathan. They both comment how different things are between them, and while they're right in the midst of having sex, Nicholas actually calls out to her. She doesn't go see him, though, but instead they continue making love. Back in the present, Catherine finds herself conflicted over exactly how to deal with this and reach Nicholas before Stephen does. She rings Stephen and brings up the book and how powerful it is. She believes that's the end of it, but of course Stephen only sees this as a warning. It sparks more controversy as he reads between the lines and decides he needs to be bold. Given she never apologized to him in her carefully crafted voicemail, it only makes him more determined to get back at her. We then cut across to Stephen Brigstock in the past, who's shocked when the police show up. They break the news about Jonathan's death, which crushes both him and Nancy. Jonathan drowned, and apparently it was an accident while he was away in Italy. The pair are required to head out and formally identify him, and that means a trip to Italy before the body is released. Nancy is shocked, and tellingly, the visuals here are really cleverly done. The color drains out of the frame, leaving mostly dull tones. The pair arrive as requested, and there they find Jonathan and identify him. His face isn't swollen, and there seems to be a mark on his arm, some sort of puncture wound. They check the room he's staying in, and this is where Nancy discovers the film reels. However, she hides it from Stephen. They do discover the exact spot of where Jonathan was killed, though, which happens to be the same beach that he met Catherine. When Nancy finds out that she just left after hearing about Jonathan's death, she wants to see her immediately. The pair hold hands while in the water, allowing the waves to lap over them. Episode four of Disclaimer starts with the aftermath of Catherine and Jonathan's lovemaking. She wants him to stick around for longer, and despite him needing to go, he concedes. This is where he starts snapping photos of her while she's getting dressed again. Meanwhile, Robert ends up reading all about this and ends up getting turned on. He's jittery in the cafe, but realizes that Catherine has always been a woman that's done anything she wants. Robert heads to work and he's back on the ball again. He leads the latest conference at work, where his task is to watch for any wrongdoing from those around the table. His only task is to watch, but he struggles to even do that. Images of the photos keep coming back and jealousy threatens to consume him. He realizes Nicholas is the innocent party in all this and wonders, in horror, just how much he may have seen during the affair. Catherine at work is a different matter. She's struggling to speak to Robert, who's still ignoring her calls, and she's absolutely unraveling. She snaps at her coworkers and hides herself in the bathroom. Catherine decides to get some affirmation and heads to the bookstore. However, she ends up seeing the perfect stranger book everywhere and hurriedly leaves. Stephen's storyline cuts to the moments he caught Nancy's death, or at least attempted suicide. She tries to drown herself in the bath and reprimands her husband when he pulls her out. It's heartbreaking to watch as Nancy sobs and mentions replicating the vastness of the ocean and how it was allegedly painless for Jonathan. 
Nancy does perk up a bit whilst going through Jonathan's belongings, though. She finds a ton of photos of her and realizes how much Jonathan adored his mother. This is in complete contrast to Catherine, though, who pawns off her son to a random couple in Italy so she and Jonathan can hook up. After their lovemaking, though, Catherine gets spooked when Jonathan becomes clingy. He wants to fly with her and has already got his ticket. As the pair end up fighting, Catherine decides to sleep on the beach. Now this reckless move sees Nicholas head out on his little rubber dinghy into the water, all alone. Unfortunately, he ends up stuck out at sea. Jonathan swims back, determined to save Nicholas's life. Lifeguards show and pull Nicholas and the dinghy back to shore, while Jonathan is in trouble. By saving Nicholas, he ends up taking in a ton of water. The turning point sees Catherine notice Jonathan asking for help, but instead of saying anything, she decides to stay quiet. We then cut back to Nancy and Stephen. They're alone, wallowing in their grief for years. They don't go out, and Nancy eventually decides to move into Jonathan's room. Here, she's diagnosed with cancer, which she doesn't fight, but instead embraces as an old friend. The pain consumes her, and unfortunately, she ends up passing several months later. Stephen in the present, though, continues his crusade against Catherine. He wants to create a fake persona of a teenage boy for Facebook and quizzes his friend about how to do this. He masks this under the guise of wanting to create his next novel and understanding the lingo for Gen Z nowadays, but it could well be another trap for Catherine. Catherine does eventually head home, where she finds Robert has already phoned her a taxi and packed a bag ready for her to leave. He messily throws all her stuff in a suitcase and is incredibly cold toward her. With his support gone, Catherine is crushed. But given what we now know about her during this episode, in the immortal words of Arthur Fleck ring true, you get what you deserve.